Welcome back guys. In today's video, we are going to start building a full bank application. We are going to be breaking down the entire database structure of the bank application that we want to build, right? And this is the first thing as a software engineer. Once you're given a project by a client, right? The next thing you have to do is to model the application first of all so that you would understand every single thing that is working in the app now as you're developing few things might change but being able to have modeled it completely would give you an idea of what you're building if you look at this i'm using draw.io right draw.io is a very 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 simple and easy to use platform that you normally use for modeling a lot of people use it so you can actually check it out now the first section of this is i call this the kudai app right the name came from the kuda app because there is there is actually an app called kuda right kuda and you can actually check it out this is a real bank here in nigeria right so i kind of derived the name from this this bank so the first section is if you see moves from here all the way down to the app model and then app endpoint. So the model is a breakdown of the databases that will be needing for this application. Let's start with the first one. The first one is what? The user table, right? The user table. This user table, it basically describes like every single thing that will be needing for a user, right? The first thing is the user ID. The username, the password, the first name, the last name, and email, right? Email type, type of the user, and role. Then you check if it's the user's email is verified and the account status. Every single table needs to come with this container that or created that, right? And this is the model I am using for this is the relational database model which means we are going to be building this with possibly mysql right some future project that we're building we are going to use a non-relational database which is like mongodb right but we're using relational database model in breaking down this application so the next thing is going to be the account table which is like the table that stores different you know details about your account and what you will notice here is that the account table is kind of like different from the user's table which means in this application a user can have more than one bank account right so because if you look at it has an account id right and it has an account number and it's pointing to a user id right so a user can actually have more than one bank account and every other single transaction is tied to that account that the user is performing that transaction on. Just like in the normal bank, my details can be used to, to create multiple accounts. So this is the idea. Now we have transaction table that stores like transactions, right? So this is a basic breakdown of, of like a transaction table. It, is, it has a transaction ID, which is a unique ID. It has an account ID, which is the account that performs that transaction and we have amount which is the amount of transaction amount that was used in the transaction then we have transaction type we have transaction date we have updated that and we have created that right now these ones are very simple then we have pay right pay table is like you know when you're using a bank app and you have to like add someone to your beneficiary right you have to add someone to your beneficiary so this is what that's what's like pay serves us so it's more like okay somebody you, you transferred money to someone you want to add the person as your beneficiary so the person is like your pay i don't know if this this really makes so much sense but you know let's just vibe it that way and the pay has the user id which is the user the, the id of the user right that this particular person but i think that instead i would make a correction to this this should be account id right because a payee is stuck to an account, not to like a user, right? A beneficiary is stuck to an account, not to a user. Now, we have the, the account number and the account name of the person that 
you know, you, you store that as beneficiary. Now, let's look at the loan. Loan is more like, you know, if you want to loan some money, this is where your record about how much you loaned and how much, what account it was given to is stored, right? And there's something I need you to notice here. If you're using relational database, you should know that this is the account table. And in this account table, this is the primary key, right? But any other place I'm using it, like account ID here, like here, here as well, they are all foreign keys, right? Foreign keys are keys that are primary keys somewhere else, but is pointing to that particular record. So that is something you should be aware of if you're using relational database. If you're not familiar with relational database, I'll just tell you, you should brush up a little bit on it. It's not really that much complex to understand, but I wouldn't actually be covering the relational database in this particular course series, right? Now, we, are, we also have activity. Activity is like where we store like the activity of the user, you know, depending on what the user does, right? So I think also that this shouldn't be, it shouldn't be tied to a user, right? Because the activity is, is on an account. So I still think that this is going to be account ID, right? So then action type is maybe the type of action that was performed and then the action description, right? So it's like an activity table. So we are done with breaking down the tables that are necessary in our application. Now, so if you look at the endpoint, there are two different parts of this endpoint. We have the admin and we have the user endpoint, right? So the user endpoint goes down here. That's what I'm breaking down here. And I think I should drag this, yeah, drag this down a bit. And then I also think this, this should be connected to it. So on my, my, my designs, they are sometimes, you know, messy. But this is where, if you look at this, admin endpoint goes all the way down to this place, right? It goes all the way down to this place. And that is it. The user endpoint stops, stops all the way down to here, right? So let's, let's break it down. So first of all is the user endpoint goes from here. You have authentication, which is what we are already used to. It has to happen, right? Authentication is a must. It's the easiest part to plan for an application. So you have register, and this is the endpoint route. Then login. Now, so when you're planning an application, some people can go to the extent of even saying, you know what? I'm going to specify the parameters that the endpoint is going to take. During the planning, I'm going to specify the methods of the in endpoint is it get method put method and so many other ones right so but i didn't really go through that pattern here because i know that this is this is like a project that we are building and i didn't want to spend so much time in the planning you know and at the same time you have to make some youtube videos so that you guys can have access to it so forgot password as well is something that you should implement and then reset password is also something you should implement. There are some other parts of this authentication, like changing password within the app, right? So, but I, I wouldn't actually be building that. Now, the next one is the account, right? The account record, the user being able to view his profile, create an account, right? Because, you know, a user has to create an account, right? And then account details, being able to view his account details, then list accounts which is like a list of all the accounts that are under that particular user's profile so it's a little bit different though because in, in the normal banking system you you're told to log in with your account details you're not told to log in with your user details but you know the approach here is that you can log in with your user details right and when you log in with your user details you'll be able to see all the accounts that are under that particular user Right, and you can transact within that, you know, is an interface of a particular account. So that's that's how this works. Now, the transactions is also another section where you're going to deposit, you withdraw, you transfer, you list these transactions, right? Which means like you see a history of your transactions. Then you add pay, which is like you add 
a pay pay which is like a beneficiary under your account then this endpoint gives you ability to view all the beneficiary then you know apply um this is loan actually this is not loan my bad apply loan then list loan as well so this is like list all the parts of the loans you applied for and their status so this is like the very simple flow for for a user right and for an admin it is more like you're managing what a user does right so authentication is normal right cool so an admin most of the time in your application there shouldn't be a place where an admin can register right there shouldn't be that so the options you would have is either in the admin panel an admin can add another user or to become an admin or an admin can just go to where all the users are shown and switch a status of a user from you know a normal user to an admin right so if you look at here you can see list all the users so this is a place where you could actually perform that kind of thing right now single user is being able to like see a single user list account is more like being able to see all the accounts on the platform you know that every account is tied to a user right so being able to see them then account details being able to see like click on one account and you can see like the balance and everything now freeze and unfreeze account you should be able to freeze and unfreeze an account and being able to do this means in your user in your account status you should be able to like have a status here because that's how you would freeze that account right all right so when it comes to the transactions an admin should be able to like list all the people that have loaned from him approve loan and then list all the transactions that are performed on the platform so this is like a basic breakdown of a very a very simple and it would be a good project actually right and we are going to see how this goes i would love to see how this goes and the building is going to be fun so i'm looking forward to that now another thing you should be aware of is the technologies that we'll be using for this simple technologies no too much stress no too much headache right we are going to be using javascript which is you know something we are already familiar with and not just javascript because we need we need typescript for for proper typing you know for security because we are building a bank you don't have to use javascript you probably might have a lot of runtime errors node.js is a very simple language to understand so if you're familiar with node.js if you're already doing javascript and you don't really understand node.js feel free there are so many courses out there that should guide you through on that we're also working on a course right it's not yet complete but on codelands right if you go to codeland cs more like a platform where you can learn how to code there are a lot of things that i'm making some changes to so this particular course here node.js right we are releasing it badge by badge so you should be able to access them if you go now to the platform try to am i logged in let me try and log in okay i'm logged in on my account so if you try to view the, the lectures go to lectures you're going to see that we have some 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 courses already out so this is some lectures actually already out so you can go on and try and watch and sign up for this and try to watch some of them but if you're familiar with node.js already cool you don't have to go to codeland cs this is this is a different thing altogether so you can actually just take this on youtube and learn right quickly as possible express is another thing that we're using express express js is going to be another thing that we're using i'm also going to drop the link to this particular breakdown i'll share it then the last and final thing is the github accessing the code to this particular project one of the ways to assess the code is going to be github right i already have a repo who died so i have two repos the ui and then the backend so for now i'm working on the backend right just for backend people who find it interesting so this is where the code is going to be i'm also going to drop the link on the description of this video i think that's it for us i'm really excited to have you right on this particular experience and i want you to finish this with me and add it in your resume that you work 
on a banking application far as you can defend it it works thank you for watching thank you for sticking to the end have fun guys